atmosphere that appears in the pre-exponential, both of those things can be evaluated in terms of the theory. In other words, we wrote a theoretical expression, we can rewrite it in an Arrhenius form and say something precisely about the constants that appear in the Arrhenius equation. So the two are entirely consistent. It's just that this gives far more detail. The Arrhenius equation is a wonderful equation for representing how the rate of the reaction depends upon temperature. It in itself doesn't provide any insight because it doesn't tell you theoretically what the exponential should be or what the pre-exponential should be. But it's a wonderfully convenient way of describing the equation, the rate and its dependence on temperature of many reactions. And what the theory does is sort of complementary. It provides the ingredients that permit you to evaluate the constants that appear in the Arrhenius equation. Professor, uh, my question is again general in nature. I just, I'm just curious to know about your impressions on India and our place in particular. Oh. Well, of course, my impression of India is extremely favorable. Um, I've been here for less than a week never visited India before. Now, if in that period of time I try to give you my impressions of chemistry before knowing any chemistry, of course, I wouldn't be in a position to say much. And to some extent, that's true here now. But I've seen quite a bit. I've interacted with a fair number. And of course, before that, some of the students and postdocs that I have had are from India. And I've always admired the culture, the gentleness, the humanity, and I've seen nothing so far that's dis disenchanted me from that view. So I'm delighted. Sir, good morning. My name is Rajendra Babu. I'm a non-chemist. My question is, I'm sure your ET theory must have been applied in drug discovery. If so, uh, can you please some quote some examples? Has it been applied to what? Drug discovery. Drug discovery. Targeted drug, drug, dis dis drug discovery. Application of electron transfer theory to drug discovery. Oh, to drug discovery. That too, especially targeted yeah. drug discovery. Yeah. Uh, not that I'm aware of, but it's not an area that I know anything about. So I don't know, for example, what drugs are used to work because they bind to certain parts of proteins or enzymes, this or that, and make it effective or uh, prevent it from working. I don't know if there are any drugs in which when they bind, they also transfer an electron. There Undoubtedly, others who know far more about, well, since I know nothing, uh, who know far more about that. So I'm not aware of any of it, but on the other hand, I haven't worked in that field at all. So there, of course, if you don't work in a field, many things can go on that you're completely unfamiliar with. Um, but I, I certainly have not worked on that and you know, seen concrete examples. I'm going to be, uh, during my stay here, visiting the National Center for Biological Science, and I'll certainly ask some of the people there then. <laughs> oh. I request uh, the Honorable uh, Vice Chancellor to thank uh, Mr. Marks. Before formally concluding, Professor Rodolph, I just want to make a request to you to give a message for our young students and staff members. What is the message? Because you are a very sagacious person with a lot of wisdom. More than that, you have a lot of good experience in life. 
what is the message that you convey to our yeah. students and yeah. teachers? Well, that's a tough question, especially since I haven't thought about it. Um, but just immediately, uh, well, just immediately, uh, just reflecting on it. Um, of course, I hope that each, of, I hope that each of you have as happy a life, as enjoyable a life, as a busy a life as I've had. Um, certainly, in any of this activity. I didn't start off trying to be with, with a great scientist or anything like that. Uh, I really don't think I thought in terms of glory or anything. Maybe I did, but I don't recall it. But what I did enjoy doing was learning. In my case, especially mathematics. I just love the logical structure of it. And in many things I do, I try to develop a logical structure to whatever I think about. So certainly one thing helps. And that is if you find out the area that you enjoy puzzling about. Because knowledge should go on, should develop, it shouldn't just be stagnant, at least certainly not in some fields. So if you find that, that excites you, then if there's some chance that you can continue that, then the rest follows. I know that in my own case, there's a special example, as I think back. Of course, I always enjoyed school, and I did quite well in school. I enjoyed mathematics courses. In fact, at least on one occasion, 